and verse 20. Just taking a section of that verse. What was translated in the King James as understood, being understood. 35-39 in Strong's. You see, it says, Noeo, to exercise the mind and to observe. I understand that spiritual teachings are complicated and are difficult to deal with. But if we say we are the Christian church, it says here in my book, I don't know about yours, but it says in my book, in Romans 1, 20 in the middle, that we are called to understand the spiritual creation, the product, the things that were made in the Rima age, even his eternal power, that we are called to exercise our mind in the eternal power of God and in the divinity of God, the fact that he is God and operates as such in a spiritual way. We are called to exercise our minds in these things. We are not called to be a carnal church, but we are called to be a spiritual church. A church that understands things that exist in eternity, and we are called to function in them, not only to exercise our mind in them, but we are called to be connected to those things so that those things can become a part of us and that we assimilate these things into our being so that they become a part of us, an integral part of us for now and for forever. We were in Matthew 4, 4 this morning. I want you just to look at that for a moment and to concentrate on that part of the verse where it says, but by every word. But by every word. And the Greek for every was pass, P-A-S. And I'd like you to check it in the lexical aids with me, please. 3956. And it's speaking about Pass Rima, every Rima, every spiritual work, that we need those works, not word, but that we need those works to sustain us in life as we pass through our physical existence. Who is here? That we need these. If you don't have access to those things, if you cannot exercise your mind in those things that are eternal, that are on the other side, how do we think we can be Christian? How can we function as Christians if we don't have access to the eternal things of God? Speaking in layman's terms. Now, it's referring to pass rima, and according to the lexical aids, it says... Pass is, I assume we are all there. Every and all. It can mean the individual within the totality and the totality, the summation, the addition of all the individuals. I'm looking at the lexical aids 3956. It can stand alone as in the case of pass, anyone and everyone. I want you to look at Matthew 7.24, which is referred to here in the passage. Matthew 7.24. And it was translated as... Who is there? It says, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings, if you come back to the lexical, what that really means is, Therefore, anyone and everyone who hears, it's all who hear, and it's each single one who hears. It can refer to all things individually and in their totality. 
past refers in speaking of past rima. It's referring to each individual work and the sum total of all the works or the sequence of works. And it's not just by coincidence. We, th we see this over and over that the Greek, the explanation of the Greek word includes within its explanation the exact essence of what Jesus is trying to describe to us in a spiritual sense. It's not there by accident. It is, it is there by design of Jesus Christ. As he envisaged that we would need all of these things in order for us to understand the essence of what Jesus Christ is trying to portray. That what we need for life to be sustained in life is that we exercise our mind in those things that are there in each of the individual works that comprises the sequence and that we have access to that sequence because we have access to the individual work within the sequence. And this is what we need for life. In this day and age of enlightenment and possibilities of being translated by the Holy Ghost, we can no longer be functioning in things that are carnal, but we must move on to the things that are spiritual because Jesus says, in his word that we can exercise our mind in those things that are there he says it over and over and he leaves no question as to exactly what is it that he means if we would just be diligent to seek out those things that are written and are available for us in the physical world there's no question as to that I'd like to refer you once again to John 15 where it says in verse 6 if a man abide not in me he's cast out or thrown out as a branch the opposite of this would also be true it says in verse 6 if a man abide not in me, he is cast out. What is implied here is that we are not in submission to Jesus Christ. Therefore, we cannot remain in a fixed place in him. And therefore, we are cast out. We are banned and barred forevermore from the spiritual ages. And because of that, we are going to wither. That's the image that is presented in verse 6. What the Lord himself is saying in verse 5 is that we need, and this is implied, we need to remain submissive to him so that we can remain in a fixed place, state, condition, expectancy, and relationship to him. We need to, have, we need to be in a fixed relationship to Jesus Christ because of our submission to him. And if we are in that state, then we are going to carry much fruit. We are going to carry much spiritual work to those who may be inspired to see those works that only exist on the other side. I just want to recap very quickly. And if you turn with me to Menno 3306, you will see that it says, to stay in a given place, state, relationship, or relation, and expectancy. Now, the place that is being referred to, that we remain in a fixed place or given place in Jesus Christ, it assumes that we are in the correct physical place, that we are in a place of physical repentance, so that we can remain, who is here? in a fixed place which is in the spiritual age in Jesus Christ that means that we are in a fixed condition in Jesus Christ that we remain in this condition of having our nature reversed and what I'm saying to you and have been saying to you for the past two weeks 
is that this is what we crave. This should be your aim in life. Not to the pursuit of happiness or anything that is physical, but rather that we have our nature reversed. If your nature is reversed through a spiritual connection in Jesus Christ, then all your problems will be solved because you would not be a physical condition, but your nature would be reverted or reversed to a state of being a spiritual being, the same being that you were created as in the Rima age before the physical creation. Who is still here? Now, if you're in that physical place and spiritual place, and because of that, you're in the condition that Jesus requires us to be in Him, then we're going to have a fixed expectancy. We're going to be looking forward to becoming that which He shows to us that we already are on the other side. This assumes, of course, that we are in a fixed relation to Jesus Christ. What is implied in both verse 6 and 5, in verse 6 it, it, it's, it is implied that we are not in submission to Jesus Christ, therefore we are cast out, therefore we do not continue to abide in a fixed place in Him. In verse 5 what it says, and it implies this, and you need to know when you look at a verse, you need to understand what is implied and what is stated. And we need to expound on these things that are implied. And we need to differentiate between those things and the things that are explicitly stated. Who is here? What is implied in verse 5 is that we are in a continuous an ongoing process of submission to Jesus Christ and because of that we remain in a fixed place in him on the other side where he is having access to see all those things and to have knowledge of all those things that we already are on the other side while we remain in that same relationship that we were called to in relation to Jesus Christ. That is what is implied. What is stated is that if we continue to remain in a fixed place in Jesus, we are going to carry much fruit to those that we minister to. Now, what is the distinction between verse 5 and verse 6? In one we are submissive, and in the second one we are not, and we are cast out. You should be able to discern and to see that it is possible to be in a condition of verse 5 and then shift to a condition of verse 6 in your own life. That it is possible to change from being a Christian to being barred from the spiritual ages and that you can only be a Christian in name. What comes between verse 5 and verse 6 what what would happen to make you shift from being in a position in Jesus Christ because you've seen the glory you have had access to the glory to Jesus Christ what would make you shift what on earth I mean which fool would leave the glory of God to embrace spiritual banishment exile who Exile for good. Which, which fool would embrace that? The fool that is referred to in Matthew 13. In verse 20 and 21. Endure it for a while, but when pressure from opposition or persecution arises because of the spiritual connection, by and by he's offended and leaves. That is why. It is very clearly stated because of opposition, because of pressure, or in, in verse 22, 
the deceitfulness, the delusion of riches, of natural ch things, choke the logos, the spiritual connection and the spiritual work, and he become it unfruitful. Who is here? It's very plain. The Lord states this over and over. We can begin to produce and then make a decision to stop. Now what I'm saying to you, that it is about time that we make up our minds exactly what we want out of this life. What is it that we desire to have out of this life? And what I am recommending to you is that the choice that you make tonight is that you choose Jesus Christ and your eternal deliverance. That is what I'm... Now, you don't have to follow what I'm saying, but I'm strongly urging that that is what you do. Who is here tonight? Praise the name of the Lord. Once we submit to the specific individual finished spiritual work Christ can connect us to that work that is all that stands between you and the exercising of your mind in things that are there your submission your will we're not called to be here today and not in Jesus tomorrow we are called to remain in Jesus in a fixed state all the time I said specific because it is pointed out to us by Jesus Christ it is something that is specified by Jesus Christ therefore it is specific who got that it is individual because it is one work of the sequence at a time that is all that Jesus requires from you. What we need is to remain submissive to Jesus Christ as he relays spiritual communications to us in the declaration so that we are on a steady diet of spiritual connections. This is what we are aiming for. A continuous diet just like how you eat naturally every day, you need to eat spiritually every day to remain strong. You can't expect to go on a fast and operate like a giant in the spirit. You're going to become a pauper and a weakling in the spirit. And when oppression comes at you, you won't be able to resist and it's going to get on your back. What we need is a steady diet of spiritual connections otherwise referred to in the King James as our daily bread I want you to go to what we call the Lord's Prayer incorrectly in Matthew 6 11 please and particularly that verse where it says Jesus teaching us how to pray what is it that we need to open ourselves do we believe in prayer does this church believe in prayer of course we believe in prayer but spiritual prayer not prayer which is just empty words but prayer that is sourced in Jesus Christ that is inspired and led by Jesus Christ because we have access to him everything we do in this life should be based on the leading of Jesus Christ of God the Spirit who is here Jesus says we need to ask according to the King James Version for daily bread now I believe all of you understand that Jesus never spoke the English language. He never spoke the English language. The words that he used were Greek 
since they were the recognized language, the official language of the Roman Empire at the time. And you were instructed that everyone speak in Greek since it was the official language of that empire. So Jesus did not say daily bread. He said something else which was translated incorrectly, I might add, as daily bread. I want you to check with me. And we are privileged to have this information at our fingertips. What daily is? 1967 in Strong's at the back of the book. Epiosios, who sees it? Subsistence, who sees that? Daily comes from another Greek word that Epiosios is related to Epiosa ensuing day or night in 1966. Who sees that one? I want you then to turn with me, please, to the Lexical Aids, 1967. Just to make sure this, that there is no other explanation for this word. The word that was translated as daily is epiosios, from epi, 1909. For into an osea being an substance occurs only in the Lord's Prayer in Matthew 6 11. In the entire what we call New Testament, it occurs only once, according to this information, occurs only in the Lord's Prayer in Matthew 6 11 and Luke 11 3. It was coined by the evangelist analogous to Perusios from Peri beyond an osio being of substance who is here the substance from beyond the Greek church father Chrysostom explained the Epusion Arton as the bread which is needed for our daily support of life it is that bread which is needful to the osia substance of our being that will sustain us that will keep us alive similar to what was said in matthew 4 4 that we need each and every rima for life who is still here the greek church father chrysostom explained the fact that it was bread but I might be bold enough to say that this church father was incorrect. He was incorrect to say daily because that is not what the Greek word that Jesus used suggests. What the Greek word suggests that Epiosios is, is subsistence. From the Greek words epi towards and I me 1510 which is exist and you can put these two words together which speaks of towards or in the direction of existence and I might add continued existence subsistence speaks of the act of subsisting the act of remaining in existence Who's here? The second word that we need to look at is the Greek for bread. In 740. In Strong's. And the original word that was used in Greek is artos, bread as raised or a loaf so what jesus actually said was that we should look for our 
subsistence bread. The bread that would keep us alive. The bread that would sustain us in this life through this physical life. No, God isn't going to have any oppressed life for you. So it is assumed that we understand that Jesus is speaking to us that we need this bread to sustain us in the abundant life. Life whereby we have access to the things that are on the other side and that our minds are able to function in those things on a continuous basis. I want you to look at the root of the word atos, which is from 142. A hero to lift by implication to take up or away. Figuratively to raise, to keep in suspense. There are two things. I don't know if you realize it, but there are two things that the word atos and the root of it suggests. One, I want you to look at that section in 142. To lift, to take up or away, to raise, that's one, and then to keep in suspense. There are two parts to this word, a hero from which Arthur's bread is derived from. Who is here? There are two words, and this is very significant. It's not just by accident that the essence of Arthur's is a hero which speaks of two things, to raise, to lift, and to keep in suspense. There are two, two different things, not the same thing. So what you could say that Jesus is saying to us in verse 11, Matthew, is that he's speaking of subsistence, subsistence bread, and which is what we should be asking for or opening ourselves to receive. In spiritual terms, and the Greek word is Epiosios Artos, which is subsistence bread, but in a spiritual sense, you would have to say subsistence excursions. The excursions that sustain us in this spiritual life that we are interested in as Christians. Atos and Ahiro indicating that we are translated to the spiritual ages by the Holy Ghost for the purpose of subsistence, of remaining in existence, of sustaining our life in the spiritual ages and by the spiritual ages. What allows us to be maintained in life does not end with our translation. It doesn't end with our translation. It begins with our translation by the Holy Ghost. And it is understood that the reason the Holy Ghost takes us to Jesus Christ is so that we can be spiritually connected to something that is there. So where we get the sustenance from, the bread, the, the, the thing that keeps us alive, it's not from the fact of our being raised, but by the fact of our staying in suspense, staying there for a while, long enough for Jesus Christ to connect us to that thing that He desires for us to experience. Thank you. That's very encouraging. It is understood that our translation to the spiritual ages makes it possible for us to be connected to the specific work that is there. In other words, for us to be spiritually connected. This is the purpose of the translation. The translation is not the end. It's the beginning of the purpose for which we were translated. It is understood that our translation to the spiritual ages is for the purpose of the spiritual connection, which is life to us. 
That is where we get life from, from Jesus Christ, from that spiritual connection, from the Logos. Life, spiritual life is maintained because of this connection. So what Christ is saying, that we should ask for, and mind you, Jesus never intended for us to ask in physical words, but to ask by our behavior, by our works, by our obedience, in fact, when we submit to it, and this work begins to flow. That is proof positive to Jesus Christ that we mean business so that we can continue to exist on the other side in Him. What Christ says we should ask for by our obedience is for the subsistent translation. As long as you're obedient and you're connected to the work, it is asking for the next declaration. Jesus does not say we should ask with our physical words, but rather with our submission to Him. That is the way of opening ourselves to receive the next knowledge in declaration from Jesus Christ. What Christ says we should ask for is the subsistent translation leading to the spiritual connection. It's very simple. The spiritual connection will keep us spiritually alive in Jesus Christ. And it can be for more than... This spiritual connection can happen more than once a day. Or it can take a week to happen or two days. That is why it is erroneous to say daily bread. Who is still here? It is understood that the translation is for the purpose of the spiritual connection and that the spiritual connection is not just one isolated connection. If we remain submissive to Christ so that we are on a steady diet of spiritual connections, which is what we want, then we are said to be a truthful vessel. Hebrews 10.22 a truthful vessel is a submissive vessel. Our thoughts and our feelings are focused on the spiritual things of the Rima age because we continue to be in our assigned course. We continue to have access to who we are on the other side in Jesus Christ. And if you move with me, please, to Hebrews 10.22, I want you to see that, that thing that we worked on this morning once more. Hebrews 10.22 says, Having our hearts sprinkled from a heartful consciousness. You see, when we are spiritually connected and are in submission over our lifetime, what, that ha what happens is that our mind, our consciousness, is not of the things that are physical, but are the things that are spiritual on the other side. Our mind is fixed. Our thoughts and our feelings are focused on the spiritual things of the other side. This is what it means when it says our hearts are sprinkled from a hurtful consciousness. Because to have your mind and your thoughts and your feelings focused on things that are physical is in fact Hurtful to you, even though you may not want to admit it. We are said to be a truthful heart if our thoughts and our feelings are not of natural things. If our desire is not for natural things, then we are a truthful heart then our hearts are sprinkled from a hurtful consciousness. Our awareness, the things that we are aware of, the things that we are constantly desiring, are things that are of this world, and they are hurtful to you. If our desire is not for natural things, but for the things of the spiritual ages, 
that are sustained in us because we continue to be submissive to what Jesus shows us, then we are a truthful heart. We are said to be a truthful heart if our heart, our thoughts and our desires are fixed on the truth which only exists in the spiritual ages. The word that is used in Hebrews 10.22 as that was translated incorrectly as true, but is really truthful, is Alethinos 228. And it's linked to the word Alethia, truth. I just want to quickly refer you to that. If you go to the lexical aids, what I'm saying to you we are said to be a truthful vessel if our hearts and our desires are fixed on the truth that exists on the other side. Now that can only happen if we are in continuous submission to Jesus Christ. It's only when you're in continuous submission, when you're giving in to Jesus on a constant basis that you will have access to who you are and what you do on the other side that will not change and that is what makes your life rich in, lexi in the lexical age 225 it says that the truth is the second the second part down at the bottom where it says truth as opposite to types emblems or shadows who saw that? It is also looking at the introduction where it says as the unveiled that is unveiled to the natural eye as the unveiled reality lying at the basis of and agreeing with an appearance the veritable essence of matter that can only be disclosed in a non-physical way the things that are on the other side can only be revealed unveiled in a spiritual way, in a non-physical way, because they defy expression in a physical sense. Truth, therefore, is the thing, work, or person that the shadow represents that can only be seen by revelation, a spiritual communication. Truth is what exists in the spiritual ages. Therefore, a truthful heart is one that is connected spiritually to the things that are true, the things that exist in the spiritual ages. A truthful heart is not one that has knowledge of the things that are on the other side, but one that is able to sustain the knowledge of truth because they continue to remain submissive to Christ. We are interested not in having knowledge, but in sustaining this knowledge of the things that are on the other side because we are continually submissive to Jesus Christ there's one more aspect of truthful that we need to get involved in and understand before we close tonight and that has to do with the fact that truthful is related to the Greek word aletheis 227 I want you to look at it with me please in the Strong's 227 at the back of the book in Strong's where it says that Eletheis, the word true that is related to truthful and part of the meaning of truthful must be related somehow to the word true not just in the English sense but also in the original context of the Greek word Alethes is from the negative particle I, which is a negative particle, and 2990, which is to lie hidden, to be hidden, hid or concealed, hidden from view. And the second part is, if you look at 2990, you need, you need to see this with your own eyes.
the negative to lie hid unwittingly so it's it's not to be hid and not to be hid unwittingly in other words to be exposed and to be exposed knowing that you are exposed who is here because the negative refers you put the other two things in brackets the negative applies to both those two things there are two elements to alethes which is related to the fact of alethinos truthful the element of not hidden to be not concealed to lie not hid but in open view a truthful heart is one that is not hidden from view not concealed from view from whose view from the view of Christ why because he is the one to see us when we are translated by the Holy Ghost it is who we are translated to see that's Jesus is the reason we are translated it's not to see someone else but it's to see Jesus Christ we don't only see Christ but Christ also sees us as we are translated to the spiritual ages and Christ is the one who shows us the declaration and Christ is the one who connects us to the spiritual work and to himself a truthful heart is one that Christ sees because we remain submissive to him and are being constantly translated back into the spiritual ages he has to see us if he is to connect us to the spiritual work a truthful heart is a submissive heart who sees Christ the second element regarding Alethes is this fact of it being not hidden not unwittingly in other words we're not hid we're exposed to Jesus Christ he can see us and we know we know that fact we're exposed to his view and we're exposed to his view knowingly not unwit un not unwittingly but wittingly knowing that we are exposed to his view we are not hid from the view of Christ and we know it we know that Christ has access to us that Christ can see us that Christ can and does contact and connect with us how can we know this because we are connected to the glory and he's the only one who can access that glory unto us everyone else is a fake and a forger and trying to duplicate something that is impossible to duplicate once you experience the glory you will not be deceived by the oppressor who tries to duplicate that glory in conclusion the truthful heart is one that is connected to the logos long term intermittently but long term a truthful heart is one that is in an ongoing state of connection to the logos of truth is one that is in a state of spiritual connectedness to the spiritual work of truth where truth is that which exists in the spiritual ages which by nature cannot be changed to be a truthful vessel is to have conquered our moral depravity our physical condition because Christ reverses our nature to the nature of our original spiritual creation because of the spiritual connection to the spiritual work of the Rima age conquering our moral depravity depends on our being obedient to one single work that Christ shows us continually not just one this is our aim our aim is to have our nature being in a state of constant reversal of being constantly reversed as we pass through this life so that we remain in the abundant life that Jesus offers us in himself 
That's what we desire. That is what we hunger after. That is what we crave. Not to be limited by our physical condition because we are submissive to Jesus Christ. And you have to put those two things together. You can't divorce one from the other. Our goal in life is not to have our nature reversed. Full stop. It's to have our nature reversed because we are submissive to Jesus Christ. And you cannot divorce these two things. If you do, you become heathen. Because everybody wants to overcome their natural, their physical limitations. But we desire to overcome our natural and our physical incapacity by obedience to Jesus Christ. That is what makes him our deliverer. And that is what makes us Christian. The fact that we are doing it by Jesus Christ. Not by our own mind or by some other way. But by the fact that we believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. A truthful vessel is to be a shadow of who we really are in the spiritual ages. And this is the essence of it. I want you to get this. If you desire to be a truthful vessel, then you are to be a shadow of exactly who you are in Jesus Christ. On the other side, not in a physical sense. If you shadow with your actions, with your works, with your behavior, who you are on the other side, then you are a truthful vessel on your way back to the Father. A truthful vessel is to be a shadow of who we really are on the other side. It's to be a shadow of who Christ created us to be in the Rima age. It's to be a shadow of who Christ originally created us as in the Rima age and to shadow the sequence of spiritual works that led to our original spiritual creation. And to shadow that sequence in our assigned course in the way of the Lord so that others may experience these works spiritually because they're inspired to come before them on the other side. This is the essence of what it means to be a truthful heart. And we need to hold on to our submission to Jesus Christ. You need to battle with yourself. And the battle begins when you come to church. It is a battle for us to get to church. But we cannot wait until all conditions are perfect for us to minister. We have to minister while the oppressor throws everything at us that he can muster. And you must recall this in your own ministry when you're about to muster that there are things that are going to be going absolutely wrong and you must still stand and minister in the name of Jesus, which means that we are coming because he sent us, because he has declared to us what to do and what to say and what not to do. And because we are coming in his nature, since we are spiritually connected to him on the other side. In this way, when our mind is focused and we are exercising our mind continually in the things that exist on the other side pertaining to us, then we are said to have a sprinkled heart, not with physical water, but with the water of the spiritual move that ended in our spiritual creation on the other side. My brothers, I don't know how else, what other angle that I should give this to you today. I don't know how else to turn it and twist it and look at it and show it to you so that you can see what I'm describing to you in a real sense. But one thing is sure that my conscience is clear and my awareness 
is very clear because